Hope you guys have enjoyed the previous videos by learning in and out of collection framework. Now it's time to learn about another beautiful concepts and interesting topic in Java, which is multi-threading. I heard from many developers saying that multi-threading is one of the toughest topic in Java. The reason behind that is people think like, okay, it is developed by Oracle Java team where it is core level, the language level, and it is very difficult to understand the concepts, how it is actually working internally. So I have taken the toughest topic and split into multiple videos and want to go in and out of each concepts in multi-threading and I want to make you guys feel comfortable in terms of like before appear for any interview as well as coding and also I will go through with the real-time programming so you guys will understand where we really use multi-threading in our real-time programming in our client place. In this video we are going to learn about another important concept under concurrent package is nothing but executor framework so here we are going to learn about what is executor framework what is executor service and what is connection pool what is thread pool how we can relate to each other and how we can able to create a thread pool how we can able to submit a job for a particular thread pool how we can use it in the real time programming i am going to execute the same code in my eclipse so that you guys will get more clarity about it so without any further delay let's get started so when I say concurrent package, so basically this has been developed by Oracle developers team and this has been created with the purpose of like implementing a lot of, you know, uh, features adding to the package so that the developers can actually uh, easy to use the functionalities, right? So one of the package is concurrent package. So under concurrent package, we have a thread pool concept. Basically, we call it as executor framework. So executor framework is nothing but how we are going to execute the particular threads, right? Whenever we deal with multiple threads, so we have to execute those threads, right? The thread has to be executed. So that particular feature has been implemented with the help of executor service. So we call this entire thing as an executor framework. So before I get into this one, let's try to understand what is connection pool. So you guys might hear when you guys work in any Java based application. So in your database connection, right? So you might see some error saying, you know, database connection timeout or database uh, connection or, uh, you know, or uh, not having uh, the limit has been reached, something like that, right? Database connection limit has been reached. So what does it mean? So basically, let's say you have your front end Java code and then uh, let's say you have a front end UA code and then uh, the middle level layer is like your Java code and that has to talk to database. So whenever you want to talk to database, you have to get a connection to the database to, uh, you know, operate some query or something on uh, your database, right? So in order to get the connection, so what you do is you would say connection con is equal to new connection of and you do all those, you know, methods, right? Like uh, the piece of code to get a connection and then you have to close it all those uh, connections, right? Once you're done with your job. So this is traditional way of writing the code. But nowadays, whenever you want to create more connection, right? So what you'll do is like when your program has to create a new connection at the runtime, so that will take longer time to execute it. So it will actually impact the performance to serve it to the front end UI. So what they did is, so when the application is getting reboot or when the application is coming up and running, so during that time, they will create, let's say, uh, let's say 100 connections or 200 connections based on what the value you are giving it in the app server so you can create a number of connections in the beginning so whenever it's required at the real time it is not going to create a new connection by default it is going to use the existing connection which is already created as part of application up and running so this way actually we are going to avoid the traffic between going and creating a new connection and then executing everything and then closing it so this is actually uh, tuning the or optimizing your application performance similarly when you deal with multi-threading, so you are dealing with more than one threads, right? So what is the purpose of thread? So you want to execute that particular thread to perform some job or some particular operation, right? So when I say, uh, let's say in my application, if I see that, okay, let's say I need some 100 threads. So in my application properties, I can define how many threads I want it. So whenever my application is deployed in the app server, so whenever the application gets rebooted, so by default, the app server will create a number of threads, let's say 100 threads in the beginning itself. So that whenever I want to get the thread, so I can easily go and get the thread, I don't need to create a new threads. So this is actually pool of threads that is called thread pool. So similar to connection pool where we have connection uh, pool of connections, right? The group of connections all together. Similarly, thread pool is nothing but it's a pool of threads. I hope you guys understand the concept between thread pool and connection pool. I just want to uh, explain thread pool with the help of connection pool. Basically, you guys might hear connection pool earlier. So I want to define this one with, uh, you know, uh, connection pool. So thread pool is nothing but the list of uh, threads, threads, which is a pool of threads. Okay. Now, why do we need to have thread pools? As I said earlier, so same threads can be reused. So improve the performance. So you don't need to create uh, each thread whenever you want it. So basically what you can do is you are 
threads are already created in the pool and you are just going to reuse it and then once you use it it will again come back to the pool so you don't need to close it you don't need to do any operation so basically that will be taken care of by the executor framework especially in the concurrent package but what i'm saying is so when you whenever you use thread pool you don't need to care about like how you can create a threads all the stuff so framework will take care of it you guys have to reuse the threads which are available already in the pool okay so this will actually improve the performance as yes, connection uh, pool similarly uh, you know uh, thread pools also increase the performance now how we can able to use this executor framework so when i say executor framework so there is a class called executor service this class is under concurrent package so you have to create an object for this executor service so executor service yes is equal to there is a class called executor so executor dot new fixed thread pool so basically here you are creating a new fixed thread pool fixed thread pool means you are defining a size so how many threads you want in your thread pool so basically you can define let's say if you say 100 here so there will be 100 threads will be created under your connection uh, thread pool and then that will be actually under yes so this is the executor service so when i say um, creating a new thread pool so now by using this particular piece of code executor service s equal to executor dot new fixed thread pool of int size using this line you are able to create a new thread pool but how you are going to use the thread pool or the, how you are going to use it from the thread pool right the threads from the thread pool the how you can do is you have to submit a job so every thread has a job as you guys seen in our previous videos whenever you are calling a t dot start or thread dot start right so what you actually do is it is going to call the threads implemented class which is either runnable interface or uh, thread class it will going to call the start method that internally talks to run method so if you override the run method whatever you writing inside run method is nothing but a job of a thread so this thread is actually going to perform the particular job which is nothing but whatever the code you are written inside the run method isn't it so you have to submit the particular job to this particular uh, thread so how you can do is i am writing a program here so there is a method called service s dot submit of j so i am what i did is like i have define one uh, particular job which is nothing but driver job or drive job drive job jobs equal to new drive job of car new drive job of truck so basically it is just an array of jobs where basically i am creating a array with two values one is with car and truck so basically what i am doing is i am uh, you know iterating through this drive job j of jobs so here what i am doing is s dot submit of j so each job i am going to submit it so whenever you submit a particular job to a particular thread or the executor service that particular it will it will go and get one thread from the connection uh, thread pool and it will be executed once that particular thread is executed it will be go back to the uh, thread pool itself so after you done with this you have to shut down the service because whenever you say executor service s equal to executor dot new fixed thread pool of int size it is going to create a thread pool with this size whatever you mentioned here and it will be up and running after you complete your job you have to shut down the service so the typical example where we can use thread pool is whenever you have uh, whenever you want to deploy your application inside your tomcat or any app servers let's say uh, websphere or web um, weblogic so what you have to do is in the weblogic or websphere or app, uh, tomcat you will have a properties where you have to define how many what is the size of your thread pool if you define let's say 100 so whenever the application gets rebooted or server gets started so that time it is going to create n number of threads so this is basically websphere or weblogic or any servers actually implementing this concept with the help of this concept they are actually creating uh, threads in the advance so that like in the run time whenever your application code needs any threads to be executed the server is not going to use or uh, it is not going to create any new threads instead it is going to use the threads which is already existing in the thread pool so i hope this is how actually it works so basically i hope you guys understand this concept so i am going to write a program by uh, executing the same thing in my eclipse and then so that you guys will get in and out of it hello guys this is the practical session where we are going to learn about executor service framework in java this is very very important to understand how the executor service works in java so for make you guys better more understanding i have created three packages to go through three scenarios so the first one is a basic one so which is got nothing but executor service so let me open these two classes here and then i will show you how to go through this one so as i explain in the uh, theoretical session so executor service is a class in java which is coming under java.util package concurrent package um we have to first create an object of this executor service which is nothing but i am just creating like executor service service equal to executor dot new fixed um thread pool of 3 which means i want to create a thread pool of a length 3 right 
so basically this is a, uh, also executors is also coming under utility concurrent package so what we are trying to do here is this particular piece of uh, line of code actually creates a thread pool of three size okay then what i'm trying to do here by using the service i am going to submit the job so in order to create a job uh, in order to submit uh, the job so what i should do is i need to create a jobs first right so i'm just creating one child thread of array where jobs i'm saying like you know new child thread of karthik comma new child thread of jay so this is one job and this is another job okay and i'm iterating each job and then i'm submitting it and finally i'm actually shutting down the service so here what i'm trying to do i'm creating a job right so creating a job is uh, uh, very simple here because the child thread is a class which actually extends thread class which means child thread is a threader class so whenever there is a child thread whenever there is a threader class we have a run method where you are going to execute it right the thread is going to execute this piece of code right so what we are trying to do here is when i say new child thread of karthik so first of all the constructor will be called here so then this string name will be assigned as karthik so then when this piece of code is getting executed this name this variable name will be having assigned as karthik so let me go and run this program so that you guys will understand clearly yeah if you guys see here it it completed execution so what it does is first actually it created an array of jobs and it was submitting one by one so first it submitted a job with uh, the name as karthik when i say name as karthik it means this particular uh, run method was executed by the thread pool uh, thread with the name as karthik that is why you guys are seeing here inside child thread karthik and then the name of the thread which executed this piece of code is pool hyphen one hyphen thread which means pool number one thread number one right and then what happened is it was again uh, taking two two seconds uh, sleep here right so that is the reason within the time it was executing another was submitting another job and that is the reason it was submitting the next job which is nothing but the name is j and that is the reason it was saying j with the same pool is same which is like pool hyphen one but this is second thread that is the reason it says thread hyphen two these are all the names given by the executor service right and then when you when it was taking two seconds uh, sleep then um, the previous job right so it was actually executing the one more time because i have put int i equal to one i less than three so it means two times it has to run so this is how actually two threads has been um, taken uh, from the thread pool and it was executing one by one so um, so this is a very basic example where we can simply create an executor service met, um, object and then you can create a new fixed thread pool and then you can simply submit the job and finally you have to submit the service sorry shut down the service so this is a very basic one so now let move on to the next one where i am going to demonstrate how we can use a runnable okay so this is all same there is no difference in the main class if you guys see here jobs is same like karthik and jay and then i'm creating an object for executor service with the fixed size of a thread pool of three and then i'm iterating the thread pool jobs and then i'm uh, submitting the services and then finally i am shutting down the service the only difference you guys can see here is here in previous we uh, previous this package i was using extending extends thread class so here the only difference is implements runnable that's the only difference we can use either way right whether we can extend uh, thread class or you can implement a runnable interface all remaining things same so let me go and execute this particular main class um if you guys notice the the output will be the same because right now what will happen is it was taking j because however it was taking from the array is all depends on how it actually during the runtime so but what we have to make sure here is if it was executing this particular thread um this particular job this job will be executed by only by the same thread again so if you see j then pool one thread two pool one thread two right and similarly when it executing the same thing again it was executed by the same thread similarly if you guys notice here karthik was executed by the thread one and karthik was executed by thread one so this is the only thing right so which makes clear that whenever multiple threads are accessing the object the same thread can access it but in a different way not like a synchronous with that right and the other way is to execute by using callable the reason why i'm displaying or demonstrating three types is 
if either you can have um, extending thread class or you can have implements runnable interface or you can have implements callable interface isn't it so that is the reason i created three packages separately to show you guys difference so you won't get confused so again um the last part is uh, to demonstrate the third scenario where um the main class is same there is no difference here i'm creating a jobs for karthik and jay and then i'm creating an object of executor service and i'm creating a fixed thread pool of size 3 and then one difference here is i am submitting the jobs one by one by iterating each and then i am finally shutting down the service if you guys notice here this line number 15 this is the difference so there is a class called future okay so this is something like very uh, new in the executor services where if i want to um, uh, return back what was uh, completed in the service uh, run method then i can get that so what i am trying to explain here is here your child thread right the threaded class actually implements callable so hope you guys know the difference between callable and runnable so whenever you guys implement runnable you have to override the run method and the run method doesn't return anything whenever you implement scalable you have to override call off method where it is not it is going to return on uh, object right that is the difference so it based on the requirement if you want to return something from the uh, job then you have to use call um, then you have to use implement callable but if you don't uh, need to return anything back uh, from the job execution then you can simply implement runnable guys so there is another video where i was explaining what is the difference between these two probably you guys can watch it over you will get more clarity about it so here what i'm trying to do here is um, implement scalable which means i'm overriding the call method everything remains same if you guys see here uh, inside child thread name and print everything so finally i'm returning object just say you know welcome to register check just a dummy text because call method should return object but if you guys go here the run method it always returns wide even when it extends thread also the run method returns wide so that is the reason i'm displaying in a different you know packages to demonstrate how it actually works so now i'm going to execute the main main class of um, callable package now i'm going to execute here yeah it completed if you guys see here karthik is the job which was executed by the thread one and again karthik was executed by thread one and j is a job and it was executed by thread two the same thing like second time also same job same thread right and finally i am able to get f dot get so what is this f so whenever you submit a job right so service dot submit of job j so this particular um, method right whenever you implement using callable it returns the object which is nothing but f f is nothing but of type future and if you say f dot get so whatever this call method is returning whatever this call method is returning you can able to get it back here so that is the purpose of here using the future if someone says uh, did you use future class in um, java so you might not know where they are talking about right so it it is in the multi-threaded environment so they want to test whether you used a really executor service in a program or not so always think about this one future is nothing but a, a just a class um, where if you want to store whatever the callable call method is returning back then you can use this future class to store it future object to store it so this is how it actually works and that is the reason when i say f is right f dot get so this f is actually used to store whatever is uh, the job is returning back so the job is nothing but the call method here and whatever return back is nothing but just a string so a string means like just welcome to register check and that is what you are actually seeing here so i hope you guys have understood this concept very clearly as i have mentioned I have created three packages to explain this executor services in detail. Each is a um, different scenario based on what is your requirement, how you are implementing it. So we have to make use of it. So if you guys have any question regarding this particular coding, please let me know. I will more than happy to assist you guys. Thank you guys. Bye bye. I hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly. But still, if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required, please post your comments in the comment section and I will be more than happy to assist. Keep watching all our videos. There are a lot more videos to come and if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share with your friends don't forget to hit the bell icon thanks for watching i will see you in the next interesting video guys